full house. I appreciate you coming. Uh, after the Pledge of Allegiance, we will have a moment of prayer. Could you remain standing and appreciate it? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for our schools in Wabash County. I just ask that we may open our eyes, our um, eyes of our heart, that we might see you, to know you, to be able to help us in all of this. Fill our schools with your love and compassion, where um, no student, not any student, will be feeling alone, uh, rejected, um, or loss. We just ask that you might also um, make us your physical presence in the hallways to accomplish this. So we'll be there in the classroom, in the offices, on the ball fields, in the gyms. Just appreciate your ability to work through us and we give you the praise. Give us wisdom in our decisions and all of this I ask in the wonder and the power of your precious name. Amen. Amen. Future board meetings will be May the 23rd, and then we move all the way to June the 13th, and then all the way to July the 11th. So we have some uh, weeks in there that we missed because of the summer. Revisions on the agenda tonight are just small addition to an uh, addition basically to the uh, field trips, and also to donations. We'll move into donations right now. We have a $500 donation from Aaron and Jessica Holly, the Northfield Junior High Cheer. We also have a $150 donation from Oasis Baptist Church, and that'll be for Northfield Lunch Account. Previously in the last board meeting, I wanted to clarify a couple of things on donations. We had a $500 donation from Ginnon Law Office, and that was for Southwood Elementary Robotics. We also had a $224 donation approved from Rich Valley Tenderloin, and that was for Northfield yeah, Baseball. Me too. And the last one was a $1,000 donation from Rimbarger Farms, and that went to Sharp Creek Robotics. So I'll take a motion on the first two new ones that need approval. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And we appreciate the donations. Spotlight this evening. Okay. In favor? All right. We have a couple, so I would like to have Mrs. Campbell come forward. And Mrs. Augusta. <clears throat> so this is always a fun time uh, to do the spotlight. And so today we're going to spotlight um, Melissa... <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. Michelle Campbell and also parent, uh, Miss Janet, if you could go ahead and just share a little bit about uh, uh, Mrs. Campbell. I wrote it down as another thing. That's fine. Okay, and I have it here just in case, too. Okay. You, uh, go well, ahead. I wrote something else. All right. Well, that's fine. Okay. I've had the honor of being here today to spotlight Michelle Campbell. I started working with Michelle a few years ago when I took over as Kids Hope Director for the North Schools. I knew immediately that there was something special about Michelle, when almost every time I was in the office, a child would come in and they would go straight to her and give her a hug. Mm -hmm. I have not been in a school where I have seen an administrative assistant that is so loved. When our daughter, Indiana, started kindergarten this year at Metro North, um, <clears throat> my appreciation for Michelle excuse me, only grew. Indy was very anxious to start school. In those first few weeks, it was difficult for her to even get in the doors. That changed when Mrs. Campbell started walking her down to class. She let Indy know that she was not alone and she would be safe in school. She made the world a difference for Indy and our family, and I'm so thankful for her. <laughs> All right, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> and so, oh, do we have some flowers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a picture of kids. <laughs> <laughs> and so again, of course, uh, um, 
First Farmers Bank and Trust is the one that actually helps us with this. And so we have a card for you. It's $40 um, to redeem at our online store. So you can buy any kind of um, apparel that you want. And before we go on, though, Mrs. Moore, would you like to share anything else? I will. Um, this is hard for me. Um, Mrs. Campbell, it's exactly what you want for your parents each and every day from the moment she comes into the building till way after she leaves for the day, she has the interests of our students and staff at heart in everything she does. Um, it's, she's a, an incredible administrative assistant, um, but she embodies the mission of our district and we are very fortunate to have you every day. So thank you. And I would, I would agree to that. You know, sometimes when I walk in, those same things happen all the time. I just appreciate you very much. And Ms. Jan, I appreciate you, though, too, with doing the uh, Kids Hope, a great, a great program. Mm -hmm. And um, are you still doing, is that something you're still doing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we have 34 this year. Yeah, sure. and so that's kind of an added bonus here when we're talking about things. Uh, having Kids Hope in our in our school is, is excellent. So she's been my right-hand woman for that, so <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so again, Congratulations, thank you for coming. Thank you. And I have one other, and of course, you are welcome to stay, but um, most of the time, people have other things they want to get to, so you're welcome to leave too. So it's up to you guys. So I'll give you the chance. <laughs> I mean, you're going to miss a lot of things going on here. I'll watch it online. Oh, yeah. Great comeback. That's good. <laughs> So the other one we have tonight, they were unable to come, but I want to uh, just spotlight uh, Bobby Shaw, uh, and I will um, read that to you here real quickly, and then we'll go on. If I can find it. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. South Junior Senior High School Food Service staff, Bobby Shaw, was nominated by grandmother Linda Reynolds. Uh, these words were shared. Uh, she said, from the students, I hear she is fun and a great salad bar lunch lady. I hear how she decorates the salad bar and enjoys her job and most of the kids. So we do want to congratulate Bobby and thanks um, again to the grandmother that has learned about that because we do allow anyone um, in our community to go ahead and spotlight one of our staff members. So this is for Bobby Shaw. I've already talked to her. She was unable to come tonight. Uh, and so I will give this to her later. So I just want to spotlight Bobby Shaw. <laughs> next, we'll just continue on with our school recognitions, if that's okay. Um, and we'll start with Mrs. Moore. Perfect. Um, so last night, we had a ton of artists from MSC and neighboring districts honored at the Honeywell Center for our spring art show and banner contest. And it's just always exciting for that recognition for our art teachers as well as kids um, and their artwork. So from Metro North, Tinley Arendale, Lachlan Mast, Abigail Nolan, Brantley Bitzer, Adley Grossman, Garrett Lorenz, Leah Scheidler, Holden Stalker, Marley Swope, Braxton Bristol, Allison Lavellet, Henley Merrick, Easton Oinger, Skylar Sloan, Meredith Williams, Natalie Black, Colby Hoffer, Chloe Long, Serenity McDermott, and then Berlin Perez were all recognized for their artwork. Um, we also had three banner winners, just like they do in the winter with the banners around Honeywell Center. They do this for spring and summer. Um, and our three banner winners were, I want to make sure I get the right ones, Leah Scheidler in kindergarten, Braxton Bristol, and then Rowan Perez, and then Garrett Lorenz was the elementary best of show winner. So um, just pretty exciting, and it's wonderful to honor them as well as Mrs. Gray for the work that they do. Um, our Little Morse Preschool and our Little Knights Preschool in the last month were recognized uh, for achieving level three pass quality, which recognizes you know, our commitment to ensuring high quality early education learning experiences and providing a safe, loving, caring environment. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that goes with that level three. And so I'm just very appreciative, appreciative of our little mites 
and with all our staff for making sure that we have everything we need for that. The site visit is a piece of cake where they come in and look at our classrooms and see the awesomeness that happens. It's the bucket of paperwork um, that is a little tedious, but completely worth it because it allows our family to apply for on my way pre-K tuition support as well as the CCDF vouchers. So um, also in the month of April and May, our little knights had their um, <clears throat> LLEP visit, which is just our licensing site visit, and they passed that with flying colors as we needed they would. So I'm just super appreciative of those teachers and support staff members because it takes a lot of extra time on their hands. Um, the last thing, and it has really nothing to do about Metro North, but just about MSD, and it's our robotics team. I mean, you know, we had five, six, six. six. Okay, well, I counted wrong. I don't were there four at Shark Creek, one at South, and one at Northville? I thought there were six. I could be wrong. Um, I'm I probably miscounted on a Shark Creek team, and I apologize. We had a Several. more than a handful <laughs> of MSC Robotics team travel to Dallas for the VEX world. And it's an exciting time for the kids, and um, exciting and exhausting time for the parents. But the amount of time that those coaches put in to make sure that that experience is phenomenal, I can't even begin to imagine. Um, and those coaches just do it and make it look so simple and easy. You know, from making sure parents know what time to be, have their kids ready, what shirt their kids need to be wearing, um, what time to be where, when to cue, when to be on this stage or that stage it they have it down and just do an amazing job of communicating that to students and to parents and i'm in awe of that um because you know just with my little second graders getting them to a saturday competition it's not an easy task and they're just making sure that it runs very smoothly so you know as a administrator and as a parent of one of the kids on those teams um just kudos to them because it's amazing and a great, it's great and exhausting. <laughs> That's all I have. All right, well, thank you. And I have a few more. So it has been our culture here to go ahead and, and share a lot of different things with recognitions and spotlights and things like that. And so sometimes I have people come to me and say, um, how can I recognize them? And I said, well, we can recognize by doing this during a school board meeting. So I had a parent, Kayla Paul, who wanted to recognize bus driver Katie Arwood. She's always noticing when her daughter um, her daughter, the little things that are noticed are important. Thank you. She does a good job with the kids. And so just want to recognize that. And Melissa Ball, our transportation director, will be coming up later, but she knows all the great work that they do and all the things that she does to help uh, lead that, um, the transportation department. Also, I'd like to go ahead and share with you some other things I've learned. And actually, Mrs. Morris, the one that actually shared this with me, but I thought it'd be great for all of you to hear. So we had a Northfield uh, graduate, uh, not Northfield, I'm sorry, Southfield graduate, uh, Logan Arnold, who actually won the John R. Emmons Award for Outstanding Seniors at Ball State University. And so if you remember the, the Emmons name, a past uh, president, this award or annual award named for former university president John R. Emmons goes to the most outstanding senior, most outstanding, not outstanding, but most outstanding senior for contributions to the university. The recipient's names, there's one of two, so just one of two, are engraved on a permanent plaque that is in the L.A. Pittinger Student uh, Center Alumni Lounge. So a great honor to for one of our graduates um, at Ball State University. And there are also a lot of other students that do great jobs there, too. Um, and I would like to, at this time, quickly um, share with you a video and I'll talk about it first um, a little bit. So our art department, Adams Weevil at Northfield, um, he'll share a little bit about in this video. But the reason why we're doing this is uh, we do have an internship. Uh, Mrs. Johnson, who's been the internship teacher, is now our assistant principal at Southwood. Uh, but she also has uh, connected a lot of people um, into our community as far as having internships. And one of them, uh, was with our own Laura Lange Bartles, 
our Director of Communication and Community Engagement, Lily Hobbs. And so Lily Hobbs has been working on this video uh, to learn a lot about the specifics of, of the video. So I just want to just show this to you. It's about three minutes and 42 seconds, but I think it's very, very worth uh, the time. We don't have any popcorn. I apologize for that. But I think uh, you'll enjoy this if I can get everything at first. Watching that, sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, high school, um, I taught, I taught for eight years at Peru. My name is Adam Swigel. I teach visual arts here at Northfield Junior Senior High School. Um, I taught I taught the last eight years at Peru, and this is my third year here. What made me fall in love with art? I always liked being around people. Um, I was really good at math. I was always really good at art. Uh, I used to tutor kids in high school with mathematics. So I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, my, my goal was to get my foot in the door as a math teacher and then wait for an art to open. But when I had my high school art teacher, Mr. Lauer, uh, he told me I need to I need to go and teach math. It's like I'd be a waste if I didn't go and teach math. What inspires me to teach students is like a light bulb moment. We get a lot of them here. Uh, just like we I have kids who've never taken art before, take art because they're required to to get a degree uh, to get a um, high school diploma. They come in here and then some of the kids it just clicks. They get really really good at it. I'm a junior uh, this year. He would collect at the end of his freshman year, and he's won national awards. He just won a huge award out of Rank University, where they actually pay the money. And he was literally just taking art because it was required. And now he actually just came back from college and visited the Ball State University, where he wants to pursue art. Here we encourage free thinking, creative thinking, and problem solving. And there are the way our employment opportunities are going in our culture nowadays is we need more people that can think freely and creatively problem solve versus black and white a b c we need to be a little more creative than that we offer tons of opportunities for the visual arts department we offer 3d and ceramics and sculpture we also offer a ton of new classes with drawing painting photography and design next fall we'll actually add ap 3d art design AP 2D art design and AP drawing. So that's worth three credit hours for college class. So we're doing that here. Uh, I'm also a very, very competitive person. So we enter as many shows as possible. We enter the Wabash County Show, we enter the banner competition, we enter classes, and most years we win something nationally or even regional. Uh, we also enter in several high school student led um, art exhibitions at Universities. We just got done with one at Orange University. We actually had Best of Show and Drawing Mentions. Um, next year, we're going to throw in another show down at Hollywood Public Park just to get our students a little bit more experience, get our artwork out there, get our name out there, and go out compete. APR is not very commonly offered, especially in a small community. And I like the fact that I was going to put up, and then I had students who were so involved in their art and they fell in love with art and it clicked with them that they're like, hey, Zia, we really like you to do AP. So, I went off and wrote the syllabus for the AP classes, and I already had to sign up for next year. If I was to sell somebody on the arts department here, it would be as simple as we offer as much as larger schools do. Um, I'm a well rounded student, I'm a practicing artist, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I can show you awards that we've won, and we've won awards in sculpture, we've won awards in photography, we've won awards in drawing, we've won awards in painting, we've won awards in drumming, we've won awards in ceramics. So we are not just this like, oh, he's just a ceramics teacher. He can't just do that. We have one word in everything. This is the most well-rounded art department in the area. So like, if you have a student or a child who wants a well-rounded visual arts education, it's us.
Oh, my name is Adam Zulu. I teach. But you can see it's just a great to see um, what they have done, not just with the, the art department, but also this is an internship, also with our own director of uh, communication and community engagement of what she has uh, taught Lily. Um, and Lily actually comes to our office. Um, and she, when she comes to our office, she is not um, the student um, at Northfield. She is uh, more of the professional. She's dressed up. And uh, it's just really neat uh, what they have done with that, that program, but also then highlighting just one of the programs that we have at MSD, and this one with, with the art. I know Mr. Zwiebel is, he was a little concerned that, you know, maybe some of this was a little too much over the top as far as all the competition part of it, but it is a fact about how well they have been doing. And you notice there are a lot of things that Mr. Snyder will put on there as far as, far as all the awards that they have been winning. And so it's good to have that competitive spirit. Um, also, he does some coaching and things like that, so he brings that into the classroom. It's really neat to see, though, how someone just takes art, like he said, just takes art for the credit, but then kind of falls in love with it, and now will be going to uh, Ball State to be able to uh, pursue that career in that. And so that's great to know. So I didn't read this earlier, but um, Laura taught her uh, Lily about the video creation this semester, everything from crafting the vision, script creation, interviewing, filming and even editing with advanced software. So it's really, really great to see that. And thank Mrs. Johnson too for continuing that on. Uh, next year we'll be doing something different uh, with that, but we'll continue the internship. Um, so I have that and I believe, um, let me check and make sure there's no other ones that someone put on here at the very end. Uh, I think that's it for the recognitions. So we can move on then. So now, want to go ahead, you want to introduce Mrs. Ball? Yeah, so Melissa is our transportation director. She does a great job. Uh, and so she tried something new uh, this year, and I'll let her explain that. I don't want to steal her thunder. But, uh, <laughs> Do you want me to stay here? Or? You can stay there. Okay, it's fine. Um, so we've seen a few other schools do this around the state uh, to test drive a bus. So we have been, Dr. Kuhn and I have kind of been talking about it for the last year, excuse me, year or so. And um, we said, we're doing it this year. So April 22nd was the day we did it at Northfield. It was really a perfect <coughs> setup there. Uh, weather was, uh, it was okay, <laughs> but we, we went, we got through it. We had, um, I'll read a little bit of what I have. We had regular route drivers there to help. Uh, we had everybody from experience of five years all the way to 40 plus years. If you know Carla Gaines, she's been doing this for quite a long time. So she was there. So we had a lot of good um, questions asked of these uh, drivers and um, some good information. Uh, the biggest thing everyone is sort of afraid of is how big that vehicle is. So we, they got to test that out. We had them do a little <clears throat> trip inspection just to kind of go around the bus to see what is there. Um, they did a small obstacle course, and then we had a mock pickup of students. So they used their lights and their stop arm. Uh, we then had them go around Northfield to Sharp Creek and had them pull in like the art buses normally do in the afternoon to do afternoon pickup to just feel what that's like to pull into a parking spot. Um, then they came back, and we actually had them back into the spot where they um, started, and um, we had quite a few that were pretty excited afterwards and they're, they're really amazed at how they said this wasn't as bad as I thought. So um, so I had about 10 CDL manuals that I got from the license branch. I gave out all 10 um, and actually needed about three to four more. So I had them go to the DMV and I've gotten back about five to six replies that they're on their way to getting everything accomplished. So. If we can get more than that, my hope was low. So I'm actually super excited because we're going to have our trainer very busy this summer. And that's exciting for him and for myself <coughs> to get some more drivers. So um, we have a couple of people who are retirees. Um, I can think of the next one. Sorry, Mike. So there's our drivers who helped. Um, it was a little chilly that morning, but uh, they got to warm up on their bus. So we had, like I said, Carla and then Tom, our trainer. 
Um, Nikki Crom is new to us this year, and then Susie's been around for a while. Uh, Cheryl Barton's been around. Um, Juanita and then um, Teresa Sears, all great people to ask some questions of. So we appreciate their help that day for sure. Um, and then you can go to the next one. There's one, there's just a few of the obstacle course we had them go through. Um, and then if you want to go to the next one. Um, yeah, those are kids we picked up for the day. <laughs> so, um, but it worked out really well. Um, it looks beautiful, but it was mighty chilly that morning. So uh, I was just thankful no rain and it didn't hit until right at noon when we were done. So we were, we were very blessed with that. Um, and just the people who came out, like I said, we had a, a fella who was getting ready to retire and he's very interested in having something to sort of fill his days, maybe not anything permanent. And um, we even have a couple of ladies who, one is from California moving back this way, and she already has all of her stuff from California. We just have to transfer over. Um, and then we have a young mother who is interested in doing this to be on her schedule with her kids. So um, it was very like looking in a mirror 20 years ago. I can't believe I can say that, but <laughs> um, she's in the same position I was when I very first started, and I'm super excited to talk to her. So. Um, she's, she actually contacted me today, so she's pretty excited. She's getting everything done. Um, actually, the funny thing about that one was she walked up and she used to ride Cheryl Barton's bus. <laughs> and Cheryl said, what are you doing here? I need to call you. Um, and she's like, well, I'm going to try it. So now she's very interested. So that was just a little full circle moment. <laughs> But it was a very exciting day. And we do want to do another one next school year, probably in the fall. And we will try at Southwood just to kind of split it up and, you know, get some more interest out south maybe. Um, so be looking for that. How many people did you have attend? We had um, we had about 25 sign up and we had about 20 to 22 attend. We had a couple of people who didn't even sign up happen to see us out there and they, they stopped in and were like, Come on in, yeah, we'll take you. So. I just really want to say kudos to Melissa. I mean, this is all all her doing. Uh, you know, her and I have had conversations about recruitment because we know that many of our bus drivers are getting to that point where they retirement age, and so we need to find replacements. And Melissa has really stepped up to that challenge. Uh, I think she's trying to do things that are getting people comfortable with uh, driving a bus and making things as easy as possible because it it does take time and effort. You know, one of the other things that she has done is she's worked on making uh, our area testing site for part of the testing process. Uh, I don't know what it's a pre-service class, pre class that everyone has to do, and it's hosted by the state. It's a it's a theory portion of the CDL program. And the state is who hosts that, puts it on, but other schools or other areas host the site for them to be able to do that. And a lot of the places, it's um, Fort Wayne, Muncie, Kokomo, so it's an hour away, which isn't terrible, but when you're going an hour that day, then you got to go back the next day and back the next day, you know, that can kind of be. So we're having one at Northfield at the end of May. So. Hmm. And we're going to try to do that again. I've already talked contact with the state and we're going to try to do that again for next year. Yeah. So like I said, I appreciate all that Melissa's doing to, to help. Uh, and she's doing a great job. So. Thank you. We cover Thank all you. the costs, right, of applications? And yeah, we cover all the costs. And, well, it's reimbursement. We yeah. reimburse them after and that cost. Sign on bonus. Mm -hmm. So we're still doing those things. We've been doing those for a couple years now. Um, you know, we also encourage our staff our current staff that maybe have the time to, to do those before and after school routes to, mm -hmm. to participate. We actually have one school teacher uh, that does that for us, and we have some aides that are doing mm -hmm. that uh, as well. And we encourage a lot of those staff uh, to kind of fill in too if they can uh, for a way to get an extra income as well on top of it. So, besides the sign one, too, we also have the referral. Mm -hmm. For our staff, yeah. Well, thank you, Melissa. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.
go back to our agenda. And Christian, we'll go ahead and introduce our other Yes, guests. so I have three wonderful uh, managers. Uh, one of them is actually a food service director as well. Um, just to kind of give us an update, it's probably been, oh, I would say almost probably pre-COVID, uh, the last time that they came in and just kind of gave us an update on food service. Uh, so I just asked them to come in and kind of share some things as far as what what is all involved and what they do uh, to help provide meals for our students. So, Becky. Okay, I'm Becky Bradley. I'm the food service director slash Southwood High School manager right now. I've been doing this, I hate to admit it, at the end of my 30 years. I've been a manager for 23 and a director for seven. And I guess I was the first official food service director they hired. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have three managers. Currently, I have uh, Suzanne Bechtel, which is down here. She's a Southwood Elementary she's kitchen manager. She's been doing a cook for three years, manager for two years. And I'll let these lovely ladies introduce themselves. I'm Amanda Rhodes, and I'm the manager at Northville High School in Sharp Creek Elementary. And this, I'm just finishing my ninth year. And I'm Ashley Schaefer. And I'm the manager at Metro North Elementary. Um, this is going to be my second in a few months year, finishing the school year as manager. And I started out actually as a sub and a dish room cleaner. So I'm going to move my way up here. <laughs> we always try to promote what we can first, then we go outside. Um, Currently, we are serving about 500 breakfasts a day and about 1,300 lunches today between all the schools. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but there's a lot to menu planning. <laughs> we have a lot of meetings. We have meal patterns. We have restrictions. We have calorie ranges, sodium ranges, fat ranges. Then we have um, six different sub vegetable groups we have to work into. So all this has to work together when we plan on the meal. So we might get the calories right, but then the sodium too high. So we'll bring down the sodium, then the calories are off. So we try to work everything in that we can. Plus you have all these kids say, well, I don't like this, but I like this. We try to work that in. So we always try to up change the menu every month. There's always somebody wanting to change it. So we try to change the menu right often. I'll get it all done. She's like, oh, can we change that? I was like, so, but we try to change the menu up. We try to stay with the newest trends. Like we got the, our popcorn chicken day is one of our biggest days. We have a uh, Asian day where we have our, you know, sweet sour pork, general sows. Um, we have a lot of favorites right now. Um, our salad bar started off really good this year, but it's kind of slowing down, which it does every year. But we're still trying to keep it going. Um, <coughs> On the ordering part, when COVID hit, it was like a nightmare. <laughs> but we got through it. The uh, ordering is picking up now during COVID. Probably half the stuff we tried to get in, we couldn't get. So we were running through schools trying to take borrow still to get the food. But starting this school year out, things have gotten much better. We're maybe short with a couple <coughs> items every time we order, but things are much better now. So thank God. And I felt bad for her and my other manager that's not here because they were thrown in during COVID and they survived. <laughs> I remember Mike calling me up on the phone and said, uh, we're going to have to switch sack lunches to get out ready in three days or more. But we did it. <laughs> so we can survive COVID, we can do anything. Um, right now, we're struggling with staffing. We've had to some days, you'll see us cancel the salad bar, cancel this or that just because of staffing issues. Um, we currently have four openings. We got three filled, but not until the fall, and we still have one posted. So we're really, really trying to get everybody. We got two that are undecided right now. So we're just going to play that right here. This summer, we'll have the summer feed in June. And this is Metro North Elementary. This is uh, more setting that up. We're heading up these two lovely ladies and volunteers and do the food portion. So they'll be working the food part. Um, during the month of June and moving Monday through Friday, and we breakfast and lunch. Um, it's all reimbursable, just like you know everything else. 
Um, is that everything you want to say about summer three? We highly encourage anybody that would like to to visit our schools. We are always welcome, welcome anybody on the board or outside parents or anybody to come eat school lunch or breakfast. Um, that's the best way to sometimes see what we serve the kids. Um, it's they get quite a variety and we're always trying to, like I said, try new things. So we're always still welcome to come visit the school, eat lunch with us. In fact, the day you show up, I will find your lunch. <laughs> you come, come and visit. Um, except for Chris, he, he eats all the time. <laughs> and on the 24th of this month, we're having our Southwood High School annual cookout. So you all welcome to come to the cookout too. To eat. So, and this year, Mr. Drake is in charge of the grilling, so he'll need a helper, so. <laughs> no, no, I need no help on the grill, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McDaniel, Mr. Critical uh, uh, used to do the grilling, but hey, one's gone and one says no, so we'll approach everything else with the cookout, so. Is there any questions? We do provide free breakfasts. For yes. all of our students. Yeah. Um, and that's really that's really our sell the breakfast this year are probably doubled at least in each building. Because uh, like at Southwood High School, I know we were doing 30, 40 breakfasts a day, and now we're up over hundred. And Southwell Elementary, I think they've doubled their numbers of uh, how are you guys students doing? Your breakfast is about the same, but yours is doing really well too. So the breakfast program I think is very, very good. Free breakfast for everybody. So and we uh, offer free lunches for our um, police officers, not just our SROs, but any uh, deputy uh, in the county. Uh, so not reserved, so not reserved. So just kidding. Becky, that breakfast thing is a good idea, a great idea for so many kids coming. From some homes, I just I'm always amazed that they could squeeze that in before school starts. You know, oh, they walk down the hall with it over their arms yeah. and into the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> but they like their breakfast now. As far as staffing, I am one to say I was a bus driver and a cook, so that works out very well if anyone is interested in doing both. We currently have, I have two one. cooks that do bus driving too. So. <laughs> That's a good way for them to take up extra hours. We always encourage it. Yeah, we have those share boxes too. I don't know. You want to talk a little bit about that? Try balls. to help eliminate yeah, some people. We have a share bowl at each school, and when the kids get done, and something that's not open that's still sealed, they put it in the share bowl, which is on ice, and then any other student can come up and take that ice free. So that way we don't have as much waste. And it's been pulled pretty well, I think, at most of the schools. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, some of the high schoolers, especially, will pick up paper cards and talk. Elementary kids that do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. well, I appreciate all of their work, and uh, I know sometimes they have to go to the bottom of the sub list and give me a call whenever they uh, <laughs> are in desperate need to come and help. But uh, I do appreciate their their hard work. Too. We all appreciate all of you mm -hmm. and tonight. We'll do that. Thank so, you. Yeah. So you're welcome to stay, or you're welcome to go ahead and be dismissed. We we <laughs> you're missing out too. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any public comment on agenda items this evening from anyone? If not, board, I'll entertain a motion to approve minutes. Any questions on that? I move to accept minutes. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Financial reports, questions on claim before we vote to approve. As you're looking at those real quickly, I want to mention I did get from Mr. Martin. There were four teams at Shark Creek, so we did have six that left. So just to verify that for sure. 
I need to approve frame. So look at that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Payroll. Nothing new with payroll. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of dropped back down to more of a normal level. Uh, but again, those will start going back up because we're getting to the end of the school year. So we'll have uh, academic ECA claims um, coming in and we'll have end of the year spring sport coaches pay coming in um, through May and probably part of June. Uh, but even in June and July, we'll start uh, summer school pay. So um, that all has an impact of the overall you know, amounts and payroll. This is the lowest it's going to be for a while. So Probably, yes. <laughs> have a motion for approval. I move to approve payroll. Second. All in favor of approval, say aye. 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 All right. <clears throat> Financial summary, anything there, Chris? No, just in the month balances for April uh, as we close on that. Education fund sits at just shy of $10 million, and our operation fund sits just shy of $6 million. So uh, everything uh, still looks um, to be good and continuing to trend in the right direction. Did you want to comment also about the 24 budget calendar? It's on the. It's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. Yeah, it's coming up. Mention that. So, can you say one other thing that I just, you mentioned the reason why I, some people don't remember the reason why we have the negatives on these others and when we. Yeah, we so just, the negative balances, those are, those are more towards the end of the uh, fund list and those are at the end of the fund list because those fund types are federal funds, which are reimbursable funds. So we spend the money first and then we have to send that in to get refunded back those dollars. So they always sit in the negative. People not, might not remember that. I just, when I flip through those, you see them, we never really comment on them. Yeah, so and every and once in a while we'll comment right. on them. Right, and if those. you see the overall fund balance, it's just under $20 million, so. Um, okay. And then to your question or your comment, Kevin, um, it is getting into budget season. So I have laid out a budget calendar uh, for all of you just to kind of start to map out that process. Uh, yeah, obviously, it's not set in stone. Things can change. But because there are deadlines uh, for certain requirements, I need to map that out. And so then I can make adjustments as we go uh, through that budget season and make sure that we can still meet all of our statutory deadlines. And so that's just kind of uh, uh, informational only, uh, just to kind of show you um, what is going to be coming your way uh, in the coming months related to uh, the budget process. <coughs> so if you have any questions about that, you feel free to email me or give me a call or just ask me. I always appreciate your time on this on the matters like that, Chris. That's all I have. All right. Under HR this evening. <clears throat> and I'll mention everything afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, under employment, we have Tracy Kennedy, Summer Secretary at Northville High School. We have Amber Lewis, Principal at Southwood High School. Uh, Noreen Ramsey, Cook, Northville High School. Retirement, William Gray, Maintenance Team, North Schools. Bridget Hammer, Head Custodian, Metro North Elementary. Under leave, there are two, 157 and number 158. And you can see the lead time on those. Yeah, Harmer. It's Harmer. It's hard to see. It looks like an M, but it is an R. It's Harmer. Looks like an M on the small sheet. It really looks like an M. I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize. 
Kathy Lyons under transfer, that's from a three hour cook at Metro North to a four hour cook at Northfield. Michelle Campbell transferring from secretary at Metro North to a three year old preschool teacher at Southford Elementary. I need to approve HR. Second. Motion and second to approve the HR list tonight. Oh, Everyone did you want us I, to decline the one? <laughs> oh. um, and I encouraged her to apply for that. Michelle's worked very hard while working full time, being a full time mom, to pursue her bachelor's degree. I believe she was the first person in her family to do so. And working with kids is her passion. And so yeah, I'm great. super proud and that she has accepted and hopefully is board approved tonight. But heartbroken at the same time. Yeah. It's very double edged. Maybe she'll be moving back to Metro North sometime. To that, could, that could happen. Some... I don't know. Yeah. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. Okay. I'd like to talk about a few of them. First of all, I want to talk about our retirees. So, uh, William Bill Gray, um, retirement um, after 20 years, all in Moore schools. And so, I want to congratulate him. Obviously, you know that uh, we also had another one, another, um, Steve knows that very, very well, another one north that's uh, also retired. We've already talked about him. Um, also, Bridget Harner, um, head custodian at Metro North. Uh, she has, I got a little more information from her. She actually started as summer help in June of, of 1996 at Southwood High School. Then she became a custodian at LaFountain Elementary for one year, and then she transferred to Metro North to so all the rest of the year. So she has been with MSC of Walrus County for 27 years. So again, um, uh, congratulations to them, but also we have uh, a large loss of, of actually uh, two head custodians and two maintenance directors this year with a lot of years experience. Um, and Steve's back there shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> I know, don't rub it in, things like that. But there are four of them that really he oversees. And so I want to congratulate them. And also uh, want to welcome now officially uh, uh, Mrs. Amber Lewis as principal at Southwood Junior Senior High School. And I'm going to read just a little bit of what uh, was written earlier, and then I'll let her uh, speak for a little bit here. So Mrs. Lewis served as a school administrator for approximately three years so far, and she's taught junior high and high school students in several areas. Um, think about these subject areas too, chemistry, physics, ICP, agricultural, and criminal justice. Outside of education, she has worked in agriculture, been a crime scene specialist, and also worked in the United States Secret Service as a special agent. And so she has a vast array of yeah, everybody's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a array of experience um, in a lot of different areas. Um, but uh, I know her passion as far as coming back to this area, uh, to MSD of Wabash County and to Southwood specifically, uh, where she also is a graduate um, of Southwood. And so I want to congratulate her on acceptance officially tonight of being the principal of Southwood Junior Senior High School. We're very excited. I know she's very excited. And I'll let you share anything else that you want to share. I just want to say thank you um, for your vote. And I had the opportunity to visit with staff and meet some students this morning. And that was, it just felt like home. I, as Mike said, I graduated from Southwood. So being back in those hallways just felt right and felt good. And I'm excited to continue the great work that is already happening and get to know the students and staff better. Well, thank you. And so officially, um, it says on there August 1st, but like we've done before, since we have hired early, if we can get her in a little bit earlier, we'll do some other things. But it's official August 1st, but other some things. And we're going to talk about that later, too, if she has any time, if she can get in. Um, because there's things to get started. August 1st any, anymore is not a good time to start because there's a lot going on before August 1st with hiring um, and just getting ready for school. And so, again, congratulate Mrs. Lewis, and um, we are very excited to have you. And so I believe that's all I have for the and, yes, and and so <laughs> Mr. Lewis, Brandon Lewis, um, I don't know if you heard about all the situation, but um, you have to help a lot too. Right? <laughs> 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 I didn't know what I was going to say that just came out, but, uh, but anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a team effort um, and a lot of time spent, uh, but luckily close to school and and uh, your children being there, it's it will be fun. 
to have them be a part of the, the school, of course, not the high school right away. Uh, I don't think we'll move them up quite that quickly, but uh, just be a part of the system and, and uh, moving up as a, as a night. So we're cool. So Brandon, do you want to have to say anything? Or? <laughs> I can be here too. All right. <laughs> Okay. Meeting time tonight, Matt from Cortland. Yeah. Uh, about 10 days ago, we hired Floyd Network to take over as the director of Cortland. He'll have big shoes to fill from Mr. Hobbs. And then that same night, we had a presentation from Garmin Miller on what, I don't know, how Cortland needs some things looked at, you know, maintenance wise and building and stuff wise. And it was kind of a Huge sticker shock. Uh, 13.5 million. And that's not including any expansion. That's just what they went through, uh, heating and cooling and different things there. There's a lot of things that could be done, but I'm afraid that a lot of things won't get done because of the way the schools are hooked together. But I would like to see expansion before we get a whole lot of improvements like that because that's something. Is a critical need. I mean, the, the building still works, but there's a lot of things that could be done. Because it hasn't been touched since what, 1967? Right. Like that. How are those decisions being made with the board? Our board and superintendents will have to have a big play in that because they're the ones that handle the money. And one thing they talked about there, there's short term and long term. So right. short term is like the five years, and then the long term is 10 years. Uh, but also, then Garvin Miller is supposed to come back. And share what those priorities are too to look at those priorities um, that's really needed just like uh mr holly steve holly with um the priorities that we have in buildings of course you know roofs hvac systems those are the priorities other than you know you have to have those things before you have other um, improvements and so i'm sure they'll come back with some of those recommendations that's just a starting process but i was kind of surprised at the number what doesn't scare you today with, with money? You know? yep. I guess the only good thing is that's that includes everything, though. That's the soft costs. That's the hard. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. Try to be positive about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you. Superintendent report. Yeah, like I mentioned before, I did want to share a little bit with legislation. So this will take a little bit of time, but I'll try go pretty quickly here. So just to give you an idea, this is the 123rd um, General Assembly. Uh, there were 1,162 uh, bills that were introduced, 223 bills on the Indiana School Boards Association uh, tracking list, uh, 252 uh, actual new laws that the governor has signed, and of those 252, 19% or 48 were new K through 12 education policy, school or local governance, or child-related laws. So again, that's a huge number again of what and and most of them are added things. There's only like one of them that's like repealed, or maybe a couple of repealed. So some of those. That are 48 are not always all negative necessarily a lot of them are positive too um, and so there there are several uh, ones actually in the last six years in education related there's 233 new bills uh, laws that's a lot um, so we'll be talking to our attorney um, a lot uh, <laughs> i just have already got a memorized all right, yeah, all right. <laughs> well you want to go ahead and just print that <laughs> So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over uh, to Dr. Kuhn. He's going to share a little bit about probably one of the biggest ones that actually was finally approved about, you know, last, the Friday ending at like 3 a.m., so about the budget. And then I'll yeah. talk about all the rest of it. Sure. So the budget is really the only thing statutorily that they are required to approve uh, over their biennium. Uh, I wish that would maybe be the only thing they focus on <laughs> and we wouldn't have to worry about 200 and some other hurdles, but it is what it is. And so... Um, as far as education is concerned, um, they increased tuition support uh, over the biennium, which is two years, uh, to $1.47 billion. Uh, so we're very appreciative of that. That includes your traditional public schools, your voucher and charter schools. So anything that fits within that K-12 education uh, uh, is covered in that dollar amount. How that impacts MSD is that we would be seeing about a 5.2% increase in our tuition support uh, for year one. And then we would see about a 1.3% increase of tuition support in year two. Uh, if ADM stays flat or level at where it's at, uh, that's roughly 
uh, $700,000 more uh, in year one and roughly $275,000 in year two. So uh, a pretty good increase over the last four years. Uh, so we're very, very appreciative uh, of those uh, new dollars. Some things that we will need to learn a little bit more about uh, is they are eliminating textbook rental fees. So they have set aside a, an appropriation of $160 million um, for schools to be reimbursed for uh, textbook rental fees. And we don't know a whole lot about what is included in that as far as textbook rental fees are concerned. Uh, but we will not be able or allowed statutorily to charge for any type of textbook or curricular material uh, for next school year and upcoming school years. Um, and so questions will be is how they will divide that $160 million out uh, between the school corporations uh, and then how much of that will cover what our needs are uh, for textbook or curricular materials. And so some of that, a majority of that will probably come from uh, that reimbursement, but there'll probably be some that we will have to uh, find other avenues uh, within our current budget uh, to pay for those things. So uh, still a lot to learn on that. There's not been really in, any information uh, yet in regards to that. So hopefully uh, that should be coming uh, soon. Uh, the other thing is uh, count days. Uh, we still will have two count days, uh, but the fall count day will be moved from a September 15th count day to an October 2nd count day. So it'll be later uh, in the year, about three weeks. And so not sure how that will impact us as far as, you know, if we are losing more students after that first count day back in September 15th or gaining more uh, during that time. But that does provide three more weeks of school before uh, students are counted for ADM. Um, other than that, uh, there were slight increases in special ed dollars, um, slight increases in CTE dollars. Uh, and so some of those are additional dollars that make up some of our tuition support. But in the end, uh, it really depends on that ADM number when it comes to those calculations. Did they change the formula for the CTE? Is that coming out of a different fund? Or they nope. They right. added it back into the budget. And so they kept it all the same except for the high level courses. They increased that by, I think, anywhere between 30 to 50 bucks uh, for those students that take those CTE classes. Uh, but everything else stayed the same. I know that was a concern because they thought about throwing that back into the general funds. Yep. Right. Yeah, they put that back as its own separate item. And to go along with that, Matt, one, one thing that we've learned, though, too, it's very, very important to stay in tune with what is going on. You know, our lobbying group, our associations that we have, because a lot of things that have changed over the course of this um, legislative session was because of all that communication. And so um, not that you always want to get involved and, and, you know, be negative about things, but you have to share your concerns that you have for your school corporation. So everyone else does the same thing. For example, um, the second year of the biennial was not going to be even that small increase that we received if a lot of people did not get involved with that because it was, it was a lot lower going into it. And that's why they, it was a historic session because it went through the budget five different times with the, the house, with the governors, the house, the Senate and then the CCR, we did that a couple times, and so it ended up uh, being better for us. You know, we're always going to say that it would be nice to have more because even though those percentages that Dr. Kuhn gave you, we are probably going to be spending some of those funding for our curricular materials, um, but we don't know that yet exactly because if you take the figures of 1.1 million students in Indiana of the $160 million, you know, you're talking about $150 per student whereas ours and a lot of other ones are more than that on average. And so we will be doing some of that, but we don't know exactly what, or what can be charged or not charged as far as other kinds of fees. So that's still to come. 
So I will go ahead. That's all he has, I think. So I'll just go ahead and give you some other ones. All these are house and rollbacks. All I want to say these time, the HEA 1002, the Education Workforce Development. There's still a lot of guidelines to go along with that, but there's uh, eight different various funds, and some of that deals with CTE. Also, the housing one, the 1005, um, the TIF. Remember how you used to have to do a resolution and you had to vote on that, like the residential TIFs? Um, that has been repealed. They can just do that on their own. But you've already agreed to those, and I don't know if there'll be any more here, but any other ones moving forward, you don't have, it removes the board resolution, so they can just do the TIFs. Um, live streaming and ar archiving meetings, that doesn't start until 2025, but we've been doing this for a lot of years, so that's good. But it's going to be all government uh, uh, meetings. So whether it's a town meeting, you know, even any of the town meetings that we have, they will have to do that, but not starting until 2025. They're given a lot of time to figure out the technology and do all those different things. Oh, there's one on 1177, handgun training for teachers. It has nothing to do with us carrying handguns or carrying guns, but yet there's different processes for it as far as if you want to do that to have um, the training for teachers. Also, the uh, 1447 in Education Matters, it talks about third-party surveys. You know, we're going to have to have permission from parents. Uh, we typically don't do that many third-party surveys. Uh, possibly uh, the Community Foundation of Wabash County, we do sometimes with the, um, the Promise uh, program that we have. Also, we're going to have to do some things with the catalog of library materials, which we already have a lot of those online. Uh, some other procedures that the board has to approve, and I'll get with you on that later, as far as removal of books, appeal processes, and things like that. Uh, school safety, uh, there's some, uh, that's a 1492. Uh, having a county, uh, countywide school safety commission, which we already have, which is good. Also, school safety committees, we'll talk about that more in our administrative meeting uh, tomorrow. Um, also, school board to approve or disapprove all school uh, safety specialists. Um, if you disapprove any of them, then we'll have to sign you to that one and go to all the training and all that. So <laughs> that was just me saying that, so just kidding. Because um, we already have a lot of them already trained. It takes a lot to train. Um, the full training is a two or three, I forget. Do you remember well, what you that just is? recently did it. Like what how many yeah, mine was at the time because of COVID. It yeah. was all online. And it... Okay, so it's different. So seems like a lot. Yeah. I'm sure our board will approve you then this more, so not this one. Um, and also changes the duties of SRO, which they have SROs, so they haven't talked about that, but expands eligible uses of Indiana Secured School Grants, which is going to be nice too. Um, and they also increase the budget a little bit with the school safety grants, so we appreciate that. Um, also, another one, uh, 1591, various education matters. Um, as far as you recall, what Dr. Kuhn talks about, the 45% uh, that we pay on the tuition support to uh, teacher salaries. Now it's going to be teacher salaries and benefits, but it's up to 62%. And they changed the definition of teacher in that particular law, and that's adjunct teacher, also our regular classroom teachers, and then also guidance counselors. So, you know, we didn't necessarily we didn't quite hit the 45% mark, which there's no a hammer to that, uh, but we are going to try to get to the 62%. Um, different reasons why we can't get to that, but we've explained that before to uh, the people, the powers that be. Also, letter grades are no longer, you know, we haven't had letter grades for a lot of years, but they put that in legislation that we won't have. They're all null grades um, this school year and next school year because we do uh, basically the GPS, the dashboard. And so the letter grades are still out. Uh, 1608 uh, prohibits school corporation from teaching human sexuality in pre-K. This is more through third grade. Um, so it's an eighth pre-K person, but I know we don't do that anyway, so, but... Uh, permits to teach IDOE uh, academic standards and instruction on child abuse. Requires teachers to notify a parent if a student requires or student requests to change the student's name, pronoun, title, or other word to identify the student. And so we are required that if someone asks about that to let their parents know. Interesting, um, some of these laws here. Also, uh, what has been repealed um, is uh, under 1638 annual performance report law. Um, so that's the one that cost us uh, quite a bit of money to put um, in our in our newspapers, but uh, the annual financial report, also or the annual performance report, also uh, annual <coughs> financial reports, and then also this is an interesting one. I don't even think I've shared this one yet. The student presently enrolled in a public school may retake a virtual course that was previously completed by the student at the same public high school under certain conditions. It's interesting how they throw all these into different uh, in, in different law or different codes here 
Um, this is interesting. You guys should know this in SEA, which is the Senate Enrolled Act. Now, 177 school board candidate filing, they've changed that definition. So in 2024, next year, it will be, the filing will be May 21st. <coughs> so write this down, gentlemen. May 21st to June 20th at noon. So basically, it's generally 14 days after the primary. So the wording in the law says no earlier than the first day after voter registration begins following the primary and no later than noon, 30 days thereafter. <coughs> Easier just to say this next, that next year will be May 21st to June 20th. Uh, there are in 391, in Senate Enrolled Act 391 charter schools, there's four pi pilot counties. There's four pilot counties that share ref can share referendum dollars, so it's a pilot. So that may happen to all uh, school or all counties, 92 counties, but right now it's just a pilot. Um, and I know this is not getting, you guys are excited about these, aren't you? Um, so let's try to finish up here. So <laughs> I forgot to tell you there's a test afterwards. But 486, though, Education Matters transfers some required teacher training to teacher preparation programs, which we'll appreciate because right now we, we have a list of about, what would you guys say, 12, 13, 14 trainings that we do beginning of the school year? At least. At least. And so now some of those, instead of being in the first of the year, they will go to the teacher training ones. But also, this is one that I have told the, the DOE a long time. It says it per, permits the IDOE to create an online portal that provides teachers access to additional uh, training um, or required training. Right now, uh, Mr. Brian Miller, our TI guy, uh, technology integration, he actually has developed something through one of our programs that we do that now. But I always said it would be good that the whole state has the same thing instead of everybody trying to do their own thing and uh, doing those trainings. Allow school corporations to develop their own staff performance evaluation plans. Before, we always, you guys had to approve those. I had to take it to the Teachers Association, and then we would do those. But now we can do things on our own. We probably won't make too many changes, but one thing we cannot change, we cannot change the classifications of highly effective, effective, needs improvement, or more than effective. Um, let's see. Permits, uh, this is interesting, permits principals to discuss teachers' working conditions or issues impacting the educational quality of students with individual teachers or groups of teachers as determined by the principal. So the big change about that is typically we had to have discussions uh, with the teacher association. Um, we are still going to do that at MSD. Um, we are in the communication business and we should be discussing, you know, different things like that. Uh, but one thing, the principals, um, the principals will decide how that works. It could be individual teachers or it can be a group of teachers. It doesn't have to be necessarily the association, but it can be the association too. And so uh, we'll be talking about that later also. There's some other things about robotics, about the science of reading, uh, about next level computer science grant programs, um, also the ASFAB that we talked about earlier. Um, and so just a lot out there again, but we'll try to digest all of it and put it into practice um, as we go along. But I believe when I went to the meeting yesterday, <coughs> last night to the school board association meeting in Kokomo, uh, you know, everything has been signed, so it's all law. So now we just have to start getting busy um, to get things taken care of. So sorry for the long. No, no problem. In fact, if you get some of the very important ones, the high ones, in transit <laughs> time, you might miss review them. Yeah. Once I have a little more specifics about things, because there's a lot of things that are still being general, so we got to figure all that out. Mr. anything correct on? On that note, uh, the science materials, we keep putting it off until we figure that interpretation. And so we, uh, we're going to do our best to dig into that, and so I plan on having some materials to show and have here for public review at our next meeting. It's going to make it kind of difficult to do our ordering, because now we get into the summer before it can actually get approved. But that's how the legislature kind of laid out. And so we do that. Uh, we're in the middle of Ireland testing, and um, we've gotten some results back, and we'll have more and more of those. And so I expect to be able to share those with you, probably not for a little while, because there's a field process for grades and all that stuff. But we are looking at graduation. And so all eyes are on that for, especially for our seniors and making sure they finish strong, even though maybe they're a little bit by a bug of, you know, spring and not quite, not quite wanting to come to high school anymore. And so, uh, so we're working with them. So that'd probably be about it for curriculum. 
Thank you. And I did go ahead and you remember last time Mr. Drake uh, wanted me to find this, and so I went ahead and put it on. I told him I put this on, but these are the trainings that you get in your packet, but we don't always talk about it. So anyway, a lot of them are this WMAP, but uh, it's interesting to see all the things that they've done. So and for our audience to see too all the things they've done for this month. So all right. Move on to new business this evening. The first item would be recommendation before us to approve classified administrators raises. And that would be also include updating the employee handbook with that information. Uh, any comment there, Chris? Or, uh, classified or just so, so um, when we first started, we had actually made some changes to our pay scales. Uh, for our classified uh, staff. Um, and so with that, we typically did raises every couple years. Uh, so this past school year, we did one of those rounds of raises and we felt like our uh, balances were strong enough to uh, look at a back-to-back -back, uh, ask uh, in helping our, our staff uh, increase uh, their wages in, in certain areas. Uh, we always uh, look to see how we match up with those that are around us and around the state uh, so that we can provide um, a fair and adequate uh, dollar amount to um, those working hours. So um, we are asking uh, for uh, another round of classified and administrative raises. Uh, not that we will always do this yearly, uh, but in the past, like I said, we've only been doing it every couple of years. And so one of the benefits we would like to increase is insurance benefits uh, that we do offer some of our classified employees and also the retirement match uh, that we also offer some of our employees. And so we would like to raise that amount uh, and then also increase their hourly rates. Um, or if they're a salaried position, increase their salary. And so I, we feel like uh, this will be a, another uh, positive uh, in increasing that, uh, those dollar amounts uh, to a fair working wage. Uh, still work to be done and we will continue to monitor that. Uh, some staff, like, like we've done in the past, we evaluate each staff and make sure that uh, in the market that, that uh, it is uh, consistent with those that are in similar positions. And so uh, we would ask that we, we uh, approve another round of classified administrative raises for next school year. And I have just a couple things to mention to add on to that too, especially for three of you that have not been um, involved as long. Uh, but typically, in when we when we first started, the three of us, and I started I guess one year earlier in this office, we had a lot of different um, ranges of uh, years of experience as far as different positions, whether it's a custodian, food service, secretary, treasurer, all those different things. There were some of them that would go from one zero years to ten years, so they would have an increment uh, situation, and some of them would go up to maybe eighteen years, similar to what the teachers were. But what we felt like um, was a better way is going zero to one plus so some of the things that you see on there so in other words if you're zero years experience then you have a rate that that we have given you if it's one plus that's another rate so that's one plus and we feel like you know learning them uh, understanding you know doing the evaluation after a year we know uh, how they're going to uh, be able to, to do their, their position and so um, that's why we will do this at least every other year um, if we can because if not, they're not gonna get any raises, whereas before they would get raises. But the problem with that too is that they started at a low rate, a very, very low rate, and it wasn't competitive at all. And so we decided to go to the zero and then the one plus. So in other words, there's only two levels. That's basically what I wanna say. But then before it took maybe 18, 20 years, but yet the starting salary was so low, it was not competitive at all. And so we moved those up you know, several years ago. And also, just like Dr. Kuhn said, as far as classified, uh, we feel like what, what has been going on with our, our budget and our funding, um, that we could do that for our administrators who do uh, put an incredible amount of time in, um, not just during the school time, but in the evenings, uh, sometimes in the middle of the night with doing different things, 
uh, with looking at things that we have for safety purposes and then also on the weekends. And so uh, that is our recommendation from both of us. Where, where does this, I mean, you say competitive, where does it put us? So many of these accounts over the last, I don't know, two rounds were well below average. And so now many of them are uh, not only uh, above average, but some are kind of at the top tier. Even. So um, we feel like we improved that significantly over the last few rounds of raises that we've been able to accomplish. And just saying one other thing, it's always it's hard to compare sometimes though with like the full amounts as far as a 260 day contract, which is a you know 52 weeks out of the year, five days, um, compared to a lot of our staff that, that worked 180 or 183 days. So when they see that bottom line, but it's as far as the dollar rate dollar, is concerned, yes, yes. Right. it's. I mean, I think we've almost gotten everybody up to 15 dollars an hour. There's still a few positions that we're getting up there, but if you look at that, that's uh, and just six, a lot. five, six years ago, it was a lot less than that. So we're, yeah. we're moving up. So, and we still have work to do, but <clears throat> doing it gradually. You know, I appreciate your effort on this because I want MSD to be recognized as a well paying, if not a very well paying school corporation. Well, you kind of get what you pay for, too. You know, you kind of draw that in. You know, and you want. Best. I move to approve these pay raises. Sure. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Second item under new business would be a recommendation to approve the memorandum of understanding with the MSDWCPA. That didn't say all that out. Metropolitan School District, the Walgreens County Education Association. Amen. Woo! Too much. All right. So, Dr. Kuhn has worked a lot with um, our vendor for 401A. And you can go ahead and just jump in out in any of this. But presently, right now, our match is two and a quarter. And so since we are not um, starting negotiation yet, because we are not uh, allowed to be able to start negotiation for the next contract until 20 or until uh, basically September 15th of 2023, uh, we have this memorandum of understanding uh, to be able to raise the match to 3%. And I will let Dr. Kuhn explain a little bit more about this. Yeah, so there's, there's actually two changes to the teacher contract to this uh, MOU. Uh, the first change is when we, uh, well, this was before my time, when the retirement benefits were set up, uh, the match was going into two different pots. 50% uh, of it was going into a 401A and 50% of it was going into a VIVA account. Uh, what we've learned over the time is the VIVA accounts weren't really designated as a retirement plan. Uh, they were more for uh, bridges to retirements, uh, but they weren't really set up to be retirement plans because if the individual passes away, that money cannot be passed on to um, any dependents. And so if they passed away and they didn't use the money, then it came back to the district. And so we felt like, one, to streamline the process, and two, to make sure that the people that uh, earn the money, can keep the money, uh, we, we decided to move it all into a 401A account. And so that is the first change uh, in the teacher contract. And we'll be actually making that change for all employees. Uh, and then the second change was the match was uh, at 2.25%. Uh, and we would like to increase that at 3%. And instead of waiting until negotiations to do all that stuff, it's easier if we can do it now so that when contracts start in August, we can start those payments then versus having to do them later uh, in the year. Uh, and so that allows them to get the full benefit for their actual contract year. 
And so again, this would be something that's obviously that you also approve with the classified staff as far as the 3% matching is concerned. So that would be the same then for all staff uh, as well. And so those were the, those were the two uh, changes then that uh, we had agreed upon with the association to get started for this coming school year instead of waiting until negotiations to do that. So the teacher association has approved it and so then we just need the board's approval then to make that happen. Discussion or motion? I move to the memorandum of understanding. Second. <clears throat> All in favor, say aye. Aye. <clears throat> Opposed, same sign. Recommendation to approve corporate authorization resolution. Yeah, so this is a requirement through uh, the bank uh, when we have uh, new staff that we want to add on as signatures uh, to be able to sign off on checks. Uh, we require two signatures. And so that involves the principal, the bookkeeper, and myself. And so with the departure of Mr. McDaniel and the addition of Mrs. Lewis, uh, we just need a resolution to approve Amber as a signee. Um, and then I don't have to sign those checks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that would be Mrs. Uh, Amber and uh, Mrs. King's job then. And then I sign up as backup if one of them can't do it. So. Moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. The last one this evening, item four, would be a recommendation to approve the overnight extended trip for field trip for Northfield Cross Country to the Cinewa Campground that will happen this summer on the 19th to the 22nd of June. So moved. Second. All in favor of approving the field trip? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> That's not a lot of fun, by the way, guys. They run, run, run. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I've some of those with Caucasian. <laughs> any unfinished business? I don't think we have any. Board policy? No public comment? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say on the comment about Chris, that Chris talking about the classified staff. I don't, as, and I was the secretary for what, 13 or 14 years. I just don't feel like 15 for classified anymore is a very high salary. And I think we should be paying the most to get the best. And our grandkids work at Panera and make 18 an hour. And so, I would just really like to see us look as hard at that as we can and get there sooner rather than later. I mean, sure. I talked to a former classified person from Northville and she said she was making like 10 an hour and that's terrible. And, and I'm sure she was very good at her job and, and we want to keep those people. So I just think we should be as fair to them as we can. Yeah. Um, I, another question, Chris, for you is: Will we be able to charge for computers as part of that textbook, or is that is that have to be paid by the corporation also? That's probably going to have to be paid by the corporation. So I don't know what all the definitions are yet of curriculum materials, but I would assume the device is going to fall under that. Definition. And how much does that? How much do we usually get that from parents for that? So a year. we charge what one hundred and ten dollars a student. A student. So that's huge. Yep. For all corporations, not just MSC. Okay. It's huge. Um, Matt, on Heartland, I know there's projects, there's repair projects, there's adding on projects, there's upkeep and all that. Is that, how are those paid for? Is it like over a 20 year period and is it based on the five corporations and their assessed values, the portion? And then what happens is that a majority vote and what happens when you have one maybe two corporations saying uh-uh we don't have any money what do we do Good question. 
Uh, that's going to be part of the discussion. How do we do it? Do we do it according to assess value where MSD gets start worse? Or do we do it according to education fund? And how Mr. Kibbeger could talk that better than I can. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, that are going to go into all that. So it's going to be, and we've already had some of those um, conversations, but there are five, five school districts. And so um, getting everyone together, that's that's going to be the, the challenge just to, to make it work. So there's going to be a lot of discussions. Mr. McWirt is going to be the one leading that Lucky with, man. With, with, the, uh, with the board doing that. So there are common school loans, so there are some discussions that that common school loans basically come from the state. Um, that is a loan that we pay back through our education uh, fund. Um, and schools do that. Um, there are lots of different schools around that do those kind of things. We have never done, and our I don't think we have, well, I know we haven't done a common school loan, but that's also an option with some different um, ideas. But there's an agreement with Heartland Career Center. And so right now, um, if we follow that agreement, um, you know, we have, for example, I think approximately 37% of the AV um, of the five schools. So we would be um, in charge of paying for 37% of that. Um, and but is it, does it have to be a unanimous vote or can't, is it a majority vote or what do you have? Majority. What do you do? Can't get blood out of turn up. Because what was it about two years ago, we tried to do that to re establish more towards the education fund and uh, the formula. The formula, and we got shut down three two. So that was to change the agreement. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of discussions on that for sure. Any other questions? Items from the board. If not, we're adjourned. Seven twenty-five.